Good afternoon and welcome to Business This Week on Independent Television. I am Blessing AET. This edition is the very first for the year 2023. Happy New Year to you. Now, because this year we're hopeful for an improvement in the address economy, we're not wasting time at all. We'll get into the discussion where we'll be looking at the prospect of Nigeria's economy in the year 2023. I have Benedict Ochago, who is a business analyst with me here. The first time I'm seeing you in the year 2023. <laughs> yeah. Happy New Year. It's same to you, Blessing, and it's a pleasure being here. Always, always a pleasure being here. I would like to host you. <laughs> Anytime you're here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you so much. All right, so a few days ago, the president um, signed the 2023 appropriation bill into law, and um, we have that bill, uh, that's a budget, uh, 21.83 trillion naira. Out of that, uh, we have uh, 11.34 trillion naira as deficit. Now, when you saw that the bill has been signed, and uh, having to know that there's uh, almost half of it, as deficits. What does that uh, mean to you? How do you look at the budget for the year 2023? Well, um, I think for me, let me start by saying that, saying that almost half of it mm. or more than half of it actually A little more is, than half of yeah, it. Yeah, a little more than half of it is deficit. I think that will be a little bit for me personally as an understatement because when you take a, talk about, take note of all other indices then you will begin to wonder, even the one they are saying that they can fund, mm. from where can they get the funding from? Basically, if we are being oil. Sincere, if we are being sincere, the oil that is being stolen, there's an outcry, and the revenue from the oil, we cannot properly account for it. And so if we are being sincere economically, we will even say that even uh, more than that 11.4 uh, trillion, is not eleven point three four trillion three, four, four naira. trillion naira is even under estimation, because when you continue, when you begin to run the budget, uh, you will discover that it will definitely be more than that. The reason is that Nigeria does not have high propensity to generate revenue. The, uh, the, the, there is technicality with which revenue is being generated. There are policies that enhances the generation of revenue. And those policies and technicalities, unfortunately, we don't have them. So what we have is that we just uh, project, we bring out the budget, and basically for the past few years in Nigerian budget, we have highly relied on borrowing. And the reason why it will still be a very difficult season for us, I'm not a prophet of doom, is that we have borrowed so much and we are servicing so much debt. And in servicing the debt, another, another budget is here. And so, we, if you have not even been able to appropriately service the previous debt, and you are now telling us that this one you can source for fund within to uh, take care of it, how do you want us to believe? So the, there are a whole lot of things within that budget. And don't also forget that a lot of those budgets is recurrent, recurrent budget, yes. uh, recurrent Recur expenditure, expenditure, a, a huge chunk of it. which is not productive in nature. Is, con uh, is consumptive in nature, not productive. But so, couldn't that be because government is the largest employer of labor? Now, when you are talking about government being the largest employer of labor, I would beg to disagree in present day situation. Because if we go to the civil service, I don't have the accurate figure. How many people are employed in the government civil service, especially the federal parastata? vis-a-vis -vis the people that have to source for their own livelihood every day. The ratio is almost, in fact, the disparity in the ratio is so wide. The gap is so wide. And so it will not, it, it, I don't want to believe that government is the highest employer of labor in Nigeria. Look at the private sector. Of course, there is no nation where the government will always be the highest. No. The private sector will always be. When you are talking about the private sector, you talk about those that are self-employed as well and the business, so all of that. So now, the government does not have a school. It's because in our governance, there is a whole lot of mismanagement. There is a problem of accountability. Money are being channeled to the places where we cannot account and to the places where they are not productive. For example, if you remember some time ago, the Edo State Governor 
cried out that the way we print money and share, take note of the key word share that the governor pointed out, he, he, he raised an alarm, an economic alarm. Sharing via allocation via, to Whether states. you call it allocation or not, but it, the word is sharing. Now, when you share, and he raised an alarm, and everybody maybe say because he's now in opposition to the federal government and all that, it didn't take more than about three months or there about, and the effect started showing that what the governor was saying, he was accurate, he was right. Because the economy is almost collapsing until the CBN had to take, the CBN governor and his board had to take some drastic measures to try to correct some aspect of it. And so there are a whole lot of things going on in our economy, a lot of mismanagement and a lot of misplaced priority in terms of spending and in terms of the hands to which this money go into. Because if, for example, look at the design of this budget, um, what is the prosperity in it? No, nothing. Because we will keep borrowing and we'll keep servicing debt with this budget. Hmm. So it, it, to, to you now, you're looking at the budget uh, from the angle of funding. Yeah. Because our source of funding for the budget is not something that is clear to it's us right clear. now. Exactly. And so it seems like it may not yield any positive results in not, the end. Not at all. And, and, and also, the president has always talked about infrastructural development. Now, when you talk about the infrastructural development, um, this infrastructure, have you been able to take note of the, some key areas where you have to bring about this infrastructure over the last seven years that we bring economic prosperity? The answer is almost not there. Because, for example, the, uh, the, the, in, in fairness to the government, they did a railway from Abuja, I think from Ibadan, and all of, all of those things supposed in a normal scenario to bring economic prosperity because there will be ease of transportation and movement of goods from the north to the south, from the south to the north. So, but insecurity and lack of trust has hampered all of those processes. Mm. And now the government is supposed to look beyond uh, some in, in, look beyond some of the their target in terms of the factor and look at human infrastructural development because this that is what brings economic prosperity if from my end and i look at the situation the human capital development in nigeria and the way nigerians think their belief system and their approach towards economic prosperity i discovered that in terms of human capital development we are still way beyond below uh, we are still way below Human capital development level is low. And no nation can thrive, no nation can prosper economically until the human capital, until the people begin to think in a certain way that is economically viable, in a certain way where the people can make their choice, both economically, both politically. And so when you put all of those indices together and look at the way we think and look at even in the, in the corridors of power, the projects they embark on, the people that have been assigned to embark on this project, their belief, their approaches, their antecedents, you will discover that we are only running around in vicious cycle. And that is what this budget, if, if, if we do respect to the, those that prepare this budget, that is what it represents. Why prepare a budget of over 21 uh, trillion? When you know that you are still servicing debt in the last one, even the last one, how, to, how many percent were you able to actualize? And so we keep doing paperwork that are not tenable. Hmm. Okay, you mentioned two things, uh, a lot of things, but two things uh, I'm going to take from that to bring us into our next uh, discussion. Uh, you talked about security yes. and uh, economic viability. Yes. Now, uh, the mining sector has been uh, challenged with several issues, one of them insecurity, uh, which the government, federal government is looking at de-risking the mining sector. Don't, don't forget about the high-level corruption there. Okay, don't. so... De risking the mining sector to attract investment, do you think is possible? And what kind of investment can be drawn to the mining sector to make Nigeria's economy more viable? There are certain, there are some nations that only depend solely on mining and they are very prosperous. And so now, what we need to do, oh, I always say that changing the narrative in Nigeria, whether economically, whether politically, and otherwise, is not a rocket science. There are areas, obvious areas you can punch, you can touch, 
And if you have the political will, because everything rises and falls on, poli on politics, uh, the government and the rest, if you have the political will and governmental will to deal with those issues and deal with the individuals that have become more powerful than institutions and crumble those individuals and bring them low and empower the institutions to be able to make room for accountability and productiveness, then you will start getting immediate results. Now, talking about the mining sector, look at Zamfara, for example. There's a whole lot of tribal sentiment and sectional sentiment in that mining. And that is what has not allowed it to bring national prosperity in terms of the economy. Because when you look at it, there is so much individualized. This one we say, this is my own. This one we say, it belongs to this. If to, the, to the extent that even the government cannot lay hold on so much there. And that is what is bringing the insecurity. It seems to be individual mining. Yes, and that's what is bringing the insecurity. When you have a lion share, when you try to have a lion as an individual there, and you seem to have a bigger share, then I will try to find a way to put you out of the system so that I will be the one uh, on top. And that is because our institutions have not been empowered. If it is been, if those mining are being controlled, uh, being run by agencies of government or agencies assigned by government to run it instead of individuals, you will discover that the insecurity you are talking about will not be there so much. Uh, the reason why what causes insecurity in Nigeria is because of high level of personal interest. That's what causes insecurity. And we have Nigerians uh, uh, that are very highly, highly individualistic, highly, highly selfish, that they can do anything, they can go any length to make sure that they can even go to any length to crumble the system to make sure that they have their way as an individual. And so what we need to do in the mining sector is to empower institutions to run the mining sector, once the institutions take over, and government develop a strong will to back those institutions, those systems, to run the mining sector, you will see how much prosperity it will begin to produce. Then again, there should be a, an issue of trust. The people that are running it should be people that are trustworthy. That, and there should be a channel, a proper channel of accountability. There is no accountability in Nigeria. That is why we are so prosperous as a nation in terms of natural resources, in terms of even money. But the problem is that those money goes to places where it cannot be accounted of. And that is the problem. That is why somebody can steal a, an accountant general can steal over a hundred billion and nobody, nobody notices until maybe after some years. So those are the things because there's no proper channel of accountability and that's where the problem is for us. Hmm. Okay, now, uh, 2023, it's a year where a lot of business people will want to perhaps expand. It's the vision of every business to expand. Yes. And we we'll also have new persons coming into uh, the business circle. But let's look at uh, uh, energy shortage. That's one issue that bedeviled the economy a lot in the year 2022. Coming into 2023, we've also seen, uh, for instance, uh, uh, fuel scarcity, a challenge that crawled into the year 2023. And just um, yesterday, the president was given, a, um, uh, two days ago, the president was given assurance to uh, Burundi that uh, Nigeria would uh, assist in terms of uh, energy shortage. But look, at, let, let's look at energy shortage in Nigeria itself. Is it possible to deal with the issue of energy shortage that increases the cost of production? Now, it is very, very possible. But also, we can take a cue from what happens in other nations. But the problem with taking a cue from what happens in other, the peculiarity of Nigeria is this individual thing because other nations will bank on technology and trust the process, the, to the technological process to bring about um, energy, increasing the energy, energy level. But in Nigeria, with a bank on individual, how much will it profit individuals instead of taking having faith in the technological uh, capabilities? And I, I, I'm saying that to say uh, this that if we want to get it uh, right in terms of the energy, the national grid collapsed about seven to eight times last year. That is not more. And then the president is his own national grid collapsing frequently, and the, promise, the president is promising Burundi. You see, Couldn't that be because he knows that it is possible to tackle energy shortage? That's now, why he's assuring another country. Now, if it is possible, 
if you can give such assurance to another nation and you know that it is possible, this present government, not just this present government alone, but since we are talking about the president, what he just said recently, now this present government is rounding off the eight years already. And that thing you know has not really been practicalized in your nation. How much can you draw uh, experience to help another nation? And that tells you how much of just lip service we have been uh, faced with in Nigeria polity, in Nigeria governance over time. Because we can't just come out to make bogus statements, we copy bogus statements and we make those statements without talking about the practicability, without talking about um, the sustainability of those statements and how we can be able to attain all of those things and we just make the statement and within two days it goes into the news and within few weeks is out of the news and everybody goes to sleep because we have a lot of lazy people in the seat of power and so now what we are saying is that look at egypt for example between um about five ten years how much increment they have had in the power sector that now will explain to you that if a nation is ready what did Egypt do? Egypt they basically just banked on technological uh, process to bring about the prosperity in the power sector, and it worked for them. But now, if you if you copy, the problem is that if you copy uh, that um, process that Egypt used and bring it to Nigeria, individuals in Nigeria will score through it because they is is all about what will I gain. It's all about and all of that. So it doesn't really take so much. Nigeria has everything to generate power. We have everything to generate power. We have oil. We have dams. We have everything to generate power. What but about petrol, refining petrol? Because the assurance he was given specifically was uh, uh, towards the NNPC assistance. So that uh, points to uh, petrol availability. <laughs> it's laughable. When you talk, when you are talking about um, refinery or petrol availability increasing, anything, and you are talking about the NNPC, not that the NNPC as an institution is a problem. The NNPC is bedeviled with a lot of individuals that, as long as they remain there, there will be no prosperity, and this oil uh, refinery thing will not uh, go have a headway. The reason is that it boils down to corruption because there are individuals that benefit when we import. That is when they benefit. And these are the people that control, these are the forces that control the NNPC. You can say you have Kiari as the MD and all of that and all of that, but the forces that control the NNPC, they will not allow. And that is what is frustrating the president. In fairness to the president, he, in some areas, he means well. But the problem is that the president does not have the will and perhaps the strength and maybe um, the current knowledge to be able to tackle some key areas. Yes, because it, it, capacity is not just about physical strength alone. There is mental strength. You must know what is tenable, what is happening in present day. In terms but that of is why certain persons are placed in that circle, and in those, the energy sector. Now, when you place certain persons in that place, as the president, you must be able to oversee and make sure they do the right thing. That is what we are lacking. There is no supervision. There is no accountability. When John Magufuli took over Tanzania, he made strong statements and he stood by it and started going to supervise himself some key sectors. For example, the health sector that was almost collapsing in Tanzania, he went ahead and spoke and went himself and all of that and discovered that even the money that were being allocated were not being expended for the things they are being allocated for. And then he had to make to fire a lot of people and give ultimatum of two weeks to fix certain things. And those things were fixed within five days because the resources were there, but people were um, trying to siphon it and sit on it. So what we are saying is that. Um, the president has not really done enough in terms of making sure that the people he appoints are to do those job does the job and brings a feedback to Nigerians. He may miss, he may mean well in terms of uh, it's okay we want to do this one, but again the kind of appointment the people you appoint in in, in, in the first place because um, when you look at it when you appoint people and you discover that these people are not delivering you fire them. 
But the reason what you see in Nigeria is that over uh, the years is that people are not obviously not doing their job and they remain there. The reason why they remain there is that the president is not supervised, the president is not even getting a feedback. Because if you get a feedback over six months, one year, and you discover that the feedback you are getting will not be able to achieve what you intend to achieve in the next three years, you quickly fire. But is, it, is it ideal for the, the president to be the one monitoring and firing people? Shouldn't it be an institutional thing that supervises ministries that monitors and then uh, gets feedback from the populace? Now, now that is what is supposed to be in a, in a senate climb. That is what is supposed to be, that institutions does those things. But in Nigeria, we have individualized uh, our system. That, for example, there are a lot of things the president do that if it's a system that has strong institution, he will not dare it. You understand? Even the institution, there is an institution to even checkmate the president. That's why the president does certain things and goes away with and gets away with it. And the institution, the individual that make up the institution, sees it that the reason why the president gets away with it is because the institution are not strong. And even the people that manage the institution have individual in such a way that they get away with whatever they do because it's the individual that make the institutions that runs the institutions the and those individuals must have a selfless um, tendency that is uh, that, that 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 is channeled towards bringing prosperity to the nation but such level of patriotism does not exist in within the confines of our institutions and that is why we are suffering what we are suffering if you go to some other system like in united states of america anybody can be a president of america but the truth is that even you that is there you know that you have to play along with the institution because if you don't do certain things, you will go in for it. Because the institution will hold you accountable. Even after you leave office, the institution will keep holding you accountable. But in Nigeria, nothing like that. The president can even do anything and get away with it. And when you see that the president does anything and gets away with it, even the National Assembly, they do anything and they get away with it, then anybody is can do anything. That's okay, what you're, is happening you're saying now. hypothetically, when there are no institutions to check people, it makes people very individuals very powerful. Very powerful. That's the problem we have in Nigeria. Individuals have become more powerful than the system itself, than the institutions, and than, than the Nigerian as an entity. Individual has, that is why some will tell you, somebody can get up and tell you that I am richer than so and so state. He says it, nobody checkmates him. No, there's nothing wrong with an individual being richer than a state. But nobody checkmates him. How come you get so rich that you are richer than a state? Nobody checkmates the last 20 years, the last 50 years. What have you been doing? You understand? Nobody brings, brings and anybody can just get up and say, uh, if, because of this, I can fire this, I can do this. And nobody checkmates. So do you have the constitutional power to do it? Sorry, a system of checks and balance. It's not there. Okay. Individuals have become so powerful. And that's why you see that even in the political terrain, individual, the, the case of I endorse this and I don't endorse this is because individuals have become so powerful. In a natural system, it's not supposed to be by endorsement that people win elections. But because individuals have been made so powerful, and that's why the case of this one has endorsed this, and this one did not endorse this, become an issue for discourse. If it's a system that the institutions work, we will even be talking in the political thing, we'll be talking about the INEC. You understand? And if institutions work, the president cannot come and tell you I will deliver free and fair elections because it's not in his power to do that. It's the institution that's supposed to be talking about that. But because it's about individuals, so, 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 so that is it. If it's so work, the CBN governor cannot do certain things he has done in the past few years. He cannot do it. For example, a, a serving CBN governor went to buy form to become the president, even when you are serving as a governor. And we, there are a lot of things we cannot say here that he, do, he did. That if his institution is working, he will be held accountable. Not that you will say that he is guilty, but he will be held to account for why and how he got to do certain things and take certain decisions. Now, the FRS, looking at some ease of doing business, the FRS has said that um, in this year, 2023, uh, getting tax clearance will not be a difficult issue. It's going to be something that takes hours, going to be automated. How does that feel? Now, I, I think that is normal. That is what it's supposed to be. Because that's why I, why I started by saying that our revenue generated propensity is very, very low. If 
this is when this uh, FRS is talking about um, tax clearance. Tax clearance and all of that. Where? Well, we can say it's not too late, but it's a bit late. That will now explain to you how serious we have been in terms of generating revenue. Maybe they are just waking up right now. And so because if it is not automated, if somebody will have to get task clearance, we take days, weeks, then it means you that want to collect the charge, you are not serious. You don't see it as a serious business. Because that is what helps other uh, system. Tax is a serious thing because it is one of the highest means of gen revenue generation. Then again, talking about them also, we have to also look at to what degree have they been able to build trust? If I'm paying tax, for example, because that's why a lot, of, let me just be very candid with you, a blessing. Nigerians don't pay tax. Do you mean some, to a large some Nigerians do not pay tax? Yes. Now, again, unfortunately, the people that don't even pay tax are the people that are supposed to be paid, which is maybe the middle class and the high classes. Those that have the money. They're very rich. They're very rich. Don't even pay tax, many of them. The reason is that when you become rich, you become so powerful as an individual and that you can control the institutions. And because of that, the country keeps suffering and keep borrowing. And so if the FRS is saying now that they want to wake up then and become serious, then you can see a lot of prosperity. But when the tax is even collected, to, which, to whose hand does it go? And when it goes to those hands, how much level of accountability? Because if I want to go and pay tax, for example, um, I will look at, if I want to be faithful in my tax payment, I will look at the ones I have been paying. I travel to, along the roads, and there's no road for me to even drive through. I go, uh, maybe I go to the airport, and the airport is as dirty as anything. So not. the use of the tax paid. Yes, okay. the outcome. You understand? Because you have to bring about outcome for the people to trust to continue to do it. Now we talk about the outcome and we talk about basically the powerful, the very, very rich. Expanded the tax nets. Yes, okay. the very, very rich should be made to pay tax. Because if there are a lot of stealing in Nigeria, and which I'm not excusing, but if you steal and those stolen things, you pay tax out of them back to the government appropriately. And also maybe, for example, you invest it back in the system. But the problem is that after stealing, they go out to invest it and uh, the white keep clapping for them and doing lip service and collecting the money. Maybe after they have used it for turnover for some time, they will return some and say it's a batch of loot and all of that. So the, 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 the West is benefiting more from our resources whether directly or indirectly, more than we that owns the resources. And that's why we keep borrowing from them. Actually, the money we borrow from them sometimes are actually our money that they took, whether directly or indirectly, either our oil that we go there to Embezzled funds. Yeah, embezzled funds. And also our oil that we take there to refine. And when they refine, anyone they give to us and all of that, and then they make so much money. And when we are broke, almost broke, they call us. In fact, sometimes they can beg on to give us loan because in, in giving us loan, they further enslave us and make sure that they keep on siphoning us and all of that. But we don't have smart uh, leadership that will be able to sit down and say enough of to all To say of we this. do not have smart leadership, wouldn't that be not uh, uh, giving credit to administrations even before this one and this current administration in now, several other areas. Now, now look at it. The, the evidence is clear. You know, when we talk, the evidence is clear. If we say we have smart leadership, what is the result? For example, we had to a, some level smart leadership during uh, General Lushego Basanjo's presidency. Yes. And what was the result? The result is that our debts were cleared. The economy surged. And the prosperity was evident. And so now, if you are trying to tell me that Benedict saying that we don't have step, uh, smart leadership now, uh, that will not. Now, give, show me the result. If you say we have smart leadership, where is the result? The result indicate what I'm saying is not just a mere word. It's the, an indication that is coming from the result on ground. The indication, the result on ground indicates that the leadership is not smart. Mm. Well, I would need you to uh, maybe use another word to say smart. We could look at other areas that... Uh, that during government is actually the, the agricultural sector and Cobra scheme that uh, the federal government uh, 
came up with. Yeah. What about but, the, the okay. uh, e-Naira that the CBN launched? No. What would you call all of this? No. When you talk about, let me start with the agriculture you are talking about. If you are talking about the agricultural scheme and all of that, we have been talking about we have to produce our own food, we have to stop importation of food and all of that. And um, now, presently, how much is a bag of rice? Because I use rice because they, I commodity that almost everybody can relate with out there. How much is a bag of rice? How much is a paint rubber uh, uh, of Gary, like the, we call it here? But you mentioned earlier that uh, the, the president could mean well, but you could have uh, persons who are not doing the right thing. There are stories, there are reports that some persons keyed into such scheme when they were not indeed farmers. Yeah. Could that be the reason why no, there are no, no, no significant okay. results uh, in that outside sector? Outside the studio, on individual level, I've criticized it. And um, no thanks, because sometimes you discover that you find more of that, um, maybe in the southern region, because you will discover that people will just go get some of those uh, funds and use it to buy can be driving around. Mm. So yeah, yeah. What, what would, in one sentence, what would mean smart leadership in 2023? Now, leadership that is uh, production inclined and um, accountability driven. Okay. Yeah, accountability driven. That people are made ahead accountable for their office, for their actions, for their words. That is what let's see. see. Once we get it right, in terms of, because sometimes the government has tried to um, do a lot of things about citizens' uh, participation, doing the right thing as a citizen. In social study, which we did in secondary school, culture does not flow from bottom to the top. Culture flows from the top to the bottom. Okay. That is the natural phenomenon. Once we get it right in terms of leadership, you will see things falling into place because you know, even as an individual follower, for as a citizen, you know that if I beat traffic, for example, there is nobody I will call that will make me not to pay the fine. You understand? You will do. You will. You will stay on the traffic because there's nobody. But the reason why people be traffic, the reason why people drive one way, the reason why people don't pay tax is that when you be traffic and is a call, only a phone call, as a release my letting go. So accountability. And, is yes, what and the we person need. that be traffic because Nigeria, Nigeria has a lot of way to generate revenue because a lot of Nigerian citizens are very uh, lawlessly inclined. They, they they can beat the law, and so. You, those are the very um, great revenue generation means you when they beat the law, the law you pay the you fine, pay the fine okay. and the fine goes to the government coffer because Nigerians find it easier to pay fine than doing the right thing and when, they, when you take advantage of that you make more money but we don't have smart leadership we just have people who are so individual, right? individualistic again the, the, the use of the word smart leadership we do not have smart leadership i think you need to retract that's that the nicest word it's, a, it's an economy is a is is a nice word economically Maybe you what could say better leadership where where, where i don't want to say better leader because you can be a, you can be presumed to be better but not be it's smartness that brings about this prosperity other nations we run to they are smart not that they are they are so perfect no there are corruption in every nation but they are smart about it there's no nation that is perfect so what, what's, what's your idea of that's been smart, a leadership being smart? Okay. Now, when I say leadership that is being smart, is a leadership where institutions are being empowered. Okay. And the people that are, are appointed to head those institutions are appointed based on competence. And this competence, based on competence and national development. You understand? Not that you just pick anybody out of uh, tribal, sectional, religious center Sir. and all of that. But because all of those things will only develop individuals. But if you want to be smart about it, you go for the hands that because nobody, nobody cares. If, for example, you go to the market and buy a bag of rice for 5000 or for 7000 or um, 10000 nobody care, we care about who is the minister of uh, agriculture. Okay, no. so basically what you're saying is building institutions yes, that deliver. That delivers and brings about uh, national prosperity instead of individual prosperity. That's what we're talking about. Okay, thank you very much, Benito Chagu, for being on the show today. Thank He's you. talked so much about having smart leadership in his uh, words, what he wants uh, 
the leadership to do is to build strong institutions that deliver prosperity to the people. We hope to see that in 2023 as we hope that the Nigeria's economy would improve. And uh, for the deficits in our budgets, we do hope that since the federal government, Ministry of Finance uh, specifically says it will be sourced from domestically and foreign, uh, uh, through, uh, from foreign sources through bilateral and multilateral loan uh, drawn downs. Okay, we hope to have a better 2023. Again, thank you for thank coming. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you. Today. And that's it. My name is Blessing Aichi. Bye.